Uh, guys, you've had an amazing week of doing all kinds of things, writing code and all sorts of things. Give yourselves a round of applause. You made it through the last couple of days. All right, so as Dr. Happy Stoller has said, my name is Pumela Lezondi. I'm going to be your MC for this evening. Um, my job is easy. The job that's been difficult is that of the judges who spend an hour fighting amongst each other, trying to choose the, those that who would win this evening and would be receiving those prizes. So I'm going to ask you to do the, um, f the first thing I'm going to ask you to do this evening. Who has a mobile phone that has data that is still on? You cannot be serious. Three people have mobile phones that have data that are still... Okay, two more on, the, on this side of the room. Maybe it's because you don't know. Okay, guys, take your mobile phones out of your pockets. Just take them out of your pockets. I, everyone has a mobile phone. Some have two. They say South Africa has over 100% mobile phone penetration. Take a selfie with a person on your left or on your right or both. <laughs> it can't be that difficult. You guys are the people who are making sure that some of us are out of employment by designing all kinds of algorithms that make sure you're out of employment. You can take selfies. And then go to whichever social media account you choose to go to and use the hashtag CPHCConf2018. And let's make this trend. So, all right, so go to whichever social media account you choose, hashtag CHPCConf2018, let's make this evening trend. All right, so um, another thing, um, if you haven't used the toilets, the toilets, you walk, to the, you walk just outside that open door, turn to the right, the toilets are going to be on your left. So those are the signs you're going to be um, looking for this evening when you are looking for the bathroom. Um, let me call to the stage Dr. Daniel Adams. He is from the Department of Science and Technology to welcome us all to this uh, award ceremony. Uh, good, uh, good evening, everybody. Um, allow me to welcome you to this uh, CHPC 2018 uh, conference, uh, and especially the uh, awards for the different uh, categories, the posters, um, the cybersecurity, as well as the student cluster competition. Um, this proved to be a very important or the important uh, part of the conference, uh, specifically for, in particular for the students and their coaches, uh, because they work, I think, since June of every year, or from the beginning of June, towards this, this particular point in, in this uh, uh, endeavors. And so this is, this is a highlight. So I think all the, the good talks, the plenaries and that, has been just in one ear out by the other, but because they concentrated so much and even spent uh, sleepless nights to, to concentrate and to wait for this, this particular uh, uh, moment. So we would like to welcome all the uh, invited speakers from uh, in the confines of South Africa, but in particular those from overseas who have joined the, the conference over the last uh, uh, three days now to make this conference a a uh, huge success, I mean, if we can use the words of, of the, the uh, master of, of ceremonies. So I think, in, in my mind, it's a very successful conference due to the contributions of everybody um, present here tonight. And we hope that you'll also enjoy uh, this, this part of the, um, of, of the conference. Um, I think it's important for me to, as I said now, this is a highlight in the life of, of, the, of the conference. Um, and therefore, it's important just to reflect for a few minutes on why this is important uh, for the DST and, and the country um, at, at large. Because we know that, I mean, for South Africa, skills um, and the development of skills and expertise in the areas of science, engineering, and technology remains, I mean, a, a big challenge and an important uh, uh, part of, I mean, for the country in terms of, of its investment. And, you know, we have, I mean, over the last few years, we've following the, the the, uh, the plan, I mean, the, the National Development Plan, which sets out an, an, a guide for us 
to, to see how we, we have to respond as a country to the, the needs in terms of skills development, also in the area of science, technology, and, and engineering. And just if you allow me to, to just to, to again, uh, yes, uh, I mean, give uh, you an idea of what are the targets that, that we, we, we're pursuing now in, in, in this particular area. The National Development Plan sets out a target of 100 PhDs per million of population by the year 2030 to improve research uh, innovation uh, capacity in South Africa. And currently, we're only producing um, about 200, uh, 2,000 sorry, PhDs uh, per year, which translate into only 40 PhD per million of population. So you can see we're chasing the target of, of 100, and we're at the moment around about 100, or oh, sorry, 40 PhD per million of population. And that will require us to graduate something like 6,000 PhDs per year compared to the 2,000 that, that we're currently doing. Um, currently also there's a challenge within the, the, the significant super research uh, supervisory capacity in the country. That means the doc, uh, uh, doctoral student to, to uh, supervisor capacity. In the moment we, we're hovering around 40% uh, percent of our the academic staff in the country having PhDs now and we're chasing the, the, the uh, uh, NDP target by 2030 of about 75 uh, percent. And you can see now we still have a long way, way to go to, to reach the, these, these targets. So it's important that the, uh, the country had to position ourselves and, and uh, introduce specific interventions how, how to, to respond uh, to, to this now. And currently the country, the, 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 the disciplines that, or, or the intervention that's aligning itself to speak to the skills development within the e-science uh, and e-research area has been currently mainly from computer science. So what we've done over the last uh, few years, uh, uh, last two years now, was to conduct a, uh, or to commission a scientometric study on the basic science, including computer science, just to assess the current state of affairs um, in, in that particular area. And we have now looked at the, trans the assessment or the state of affairs across a, a number of, 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 of areas in terms of the staff capacity. And it's important, I mean, uh, encouraging to see that the study shows that the, the staff, in, in, with the regards to the staff capacity in computer science, which is the, the driving force for skills development in the areas of, of data science and, and uh, I mean, uh, um, uh, technology development, cyber infrastructure development, um, there's, there's, there's an improvement in the area of, of, of the staff capacity. There's an improvement in the area of the staff the diversity, I mean, gender uh, and demographics and, and, and so forth. Um, there's also an improvement in, in, the, 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 doct I mean, uh, in the, the areas of the doctoral enrollments. But when it comes to the, and also the female and, uh, I mean, uh, contributions to, to that. But when it comes to the pipeline, in terms of the, the students entering the system as honors or undergraduate students to where, I mean, those ones really taking up uh, or mean, pursuing postgraduate uh, post study, and in particular doctoral studies, that remains I mean, a challenge for, for, for the country. The numbers are actually showing, I mean, in, in, going in the, in the negative direction. The number of females, and I think I mean, there was a big emphasis and a, a special award from, from uh, Intel for the best female um, uh, student I mean, uh, throughout the competitions here. So there's actually a worrying trend also in, in the case of, of females, the number of post I mean, doctoral students has actually decreased uh, over the period 20, 2000, uh, from 2005 to 2015, which this, this study is, is, is covering. And the number of, of students, I mean, we're starting over the input of number of enrollments uh, of, 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 of postgraduate students. Um, something like, for say, 471 enrollments, and of that, just over 65% uh, uh, eventually graduate with, with on, a, on a students. In the case of the masters, again, the, the I mean, we're in, in the area of only 23% uh, of the students in new enrollments eventually passing uh, the post, I mean, or graduating with masters. And then the worrying part is, and especially in the context of, of us uh, pursuing the, the NDP targets, is the number of PhD students in terms of new enrollments versus the number that graduate, I mean, graduating and end. For the period uh, of uh, 2000, and, uh, 2000 to 2015, the, there was actually a decline from 50% uh, enrollments to, to graduations to in the year 2015 um, to only 18%.
So they're so worrying. And, and if you think of, you start about 80, 60, one uh, percent of student of honor students graduating, and only 18 percent of PhDs graduating, uh, graduating at the end. So you can see the pipeline. There's a huge leakage from the, the number of enrollments to the number of, of, of students. So it's, it remains a challenge for us to, as a country, to really I mean, introduce specific uh, or special interventions to address this pipeline uh, leakage issue now. And so therefore, I mean, to, we have to int introduce as a government and as a country incentives to actually stimulate the, the pipeline so that more students come entering into the system at honors and undergraduate level I mean, and uh, exiting with, with PhDs um, uh, at the end in order to, to really to make the, to grow the knowledge economy um, in, in the country. Um, and therefore, the, um, the DST remains I mean, committed to I mean, introduce and support a specific or special I mean, or targeted uh, in, interventions. Um, and we just over the last uh, two years or so, we introduced a, a, a master's program, uh, a multidisciplinary, a multi institutional program uh, to, uh, uh, with a structured master's program um, uh, led by a number of, of universities in the country to address specifically the skill set and the requirements within the, the e science and e research uh, areas. And therefore, it's, I mean, for us, um, the, the, the uh, interventions like this, or the conference, the hosting of this conference, where students and researchers in, are exposed to quality um, in presentations and, and, and rubbing shoulders with the best uh, people in, in the world in, in this particular field. And these competitions that has been introduced uh, over the last few years provides an ex excellent platform for this actually to grow or to stimulate and to grow uh, the, the, the pipeline. And therefore the DST remains committed to, uh, I mean, to support uh, uh, in interventions um, uh, like this. And the, the, over the last few years also, the I mean, I mean my, my, my history with, with this uh, conference it started off with the cluster competition, which proved to be a highlight. And since we introduced now the NICIS, which is the National Integrated Cyber Infrastructure, which is now with the focus of an integrated approach towards the high performance computing, the data, as well as the networks, and as well as the uh, HCD, there was also an expansion of the competitions, both not just the cluster, but also for the cyber security challenge and as well as the, the, the poster support. So there's this is growing interventions I mean, and, and innovations now and target interventions with the country launched through these efforts now and, and is fully uh, supported uh, by, 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 the, by, the DS, by the DST. So um, we, we acknowledge the, the been, and, and would actually value the contribution or the, the efforts put in by the NICIS management uh, across those four uh, elements I've, I've indicated, and the st stakeholders for actually making all the, this, this, pos uh, this possible, the competitions and all the efforts that's going uh, around it. We also acknowledge the, the ongoing support from industry and the research uh, in, institutions in, in this regard, because if it's not the, I mean, the partnership between the academia, the government, as well as the research institutions and with industry, this is, is, is not, no, not possible. And we, I mean, this is inevitable through the, I mean, uh, recognizing the, the different interventions as, as well as the, the general support from our, from our indus, uh, indus, uh, partners. So lastly, I mean, I would like to congratulate all the students, um, the coaches and the supervisors for producing the, the uh, winning teams. Um, so, but although, I mean, in my mind, I mean, everybody's a winner. All the participants are actually winners uh, because the fact that, you I mean, they agreed or, I mean, uh, uh, or to participate or took up the challenge to participate in, in this, uh, this competition now here is already a demonstration that, that you, you're a winner. Unfortunately, end of the day, there can only be one uh, winner. So good luck also then to, in particular, the, the, the winners of, of the, the winning team for the cluster competition, uh, which will, I think their journey only starts tonight because they still have to go through, uh, some, I mean, uh, intense preparations for the uh, international competition um, uh, next year. So with that, I would like again to say very welcome to this uh, awards evening here. Uh, congratulations to the winners and everybody that may, I mean, contributed in a big or small way to make this evening uh, I mean, possible. And uh, we hope that you will 
uh, enjoy the, the evening and hope that the tension that built up over the last uh, three days for the students will tonight come to a culmination in, in, in the positive outcome of all the efforts that, that you've made I mean, over the last three years. So thank you very much and welcome. All right, so guys, we are going to do things a little differently this evening, right? So it's been a, a week of all things serious, listening to serious talks and speeches and you guys working outside and things like that. Let's take off your jackets, if you will. Dance when Sange M is up on stage. Sing along to Sange M when she's asking you to hum along with her. It, it, it's a beautiful sound. And her first song, African Dream, and I believe that it's these guys in this room as well who are going to solve some of Africa's problems because they, there are plenty of problems. And often when our story is told to the outside world, it's told from a perspective of its problems. And it's not people who are solving their problems. It's not people who are um, designing applications to solve problems or designing machines to solve problems or people using artificial intelligence to solve some of their problems. It's, it's you guys in this room who are going to um, be part of that African dream that is going to solve problems for us and possibly for the rest of the world as well. Um, Mr. Uh, Dr. Radha Daniel Miyagete, would you please come to the podium? All right, so we've come to the first um, award for this evening. It's the poster award. It's the guys who communicate certain messages to the rest of the public. So the rest of us understand what you guys are working on a, a little bit easier. So that's what Dr. Daniel Miyagetti is going to be announcing for us. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Master of Ceremony, for introducing me in this way. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My task this evening is to essentially to award the poster prize for students who excelled presenting their posters during this conference. They were in two categories. We're focusing on masters and the PhDs. The reason why we uh, essentially, um, you know, re we award students because we want to, we recognize the work they are doing using high performance computing systems in Cape Town. And the process to do this, it was not a straightforward process. Before the conference, we invited the adjudicators and senior academics in South Africa. So those who are available to avail themselves. And we had a meeting to discuss the adjudication strategy. And we agreed on the strategy, then we did the evaluation. It was about approximately 60 posters, of which we had about uh, 18 masters. Very good work, but you know, where there is competition, so as uh, Dr. Adams alluded, so we, we need to come down, cut down numbers to, to the numbers that we want. Okay, while I'm getting technical assistance, I should mention that we are awarding three prizes in each category. We start with the third one, going to the second, and the winner. Okay. This is some highlights for those who are not part of the poster exhibition that took place on Monday. So you can see the a student presenting to some of the participants of the conference. There are more of this taken by the photographer. I already mentioned that there are two categories, masters and doctoral uh, uh, level. So we st we'll, we'll be starting with the masters. So third prize, second prize, and the first prize. And then the same with doctoral level. Uh, the team of adjudicators actually composed of senior academics already indicated their names. It was myself, part of the chair, a neutral person, and then there was Dr. Danny Luke Ludic from University of Stellenbosch, Professor Kafaran S. Hazen from University of Stellenbosch as well, and Prof. Hassani Chauke from University of Limpopo, 
Professor Penny Covenda from University of Johannesburg, and then George Manyani from MNUST in Kenya. The panel did a very good work. I mean, you'll see as, we, as I proceed with this. This is uh, just to get an impression of the prizes we give. We hope to improve in future and involving other science councils. But this is a, a, rec a recognition. <laughs> Students, you must take it as a recognition. It comes with a certificate. So you can see the third prize for, for both categories is, is PT100 Power Bank. You'll take it with your certificate. And the second prize is one terabyte hard drive. So you'll have some storage device, such as portable, of course for your data, for your thesis work, and, and the first prize is actually two terabytes hard drive. You must be careful, student. Just look at the uh, criteria that we used. We actually, the panel had to look at the quality of the poster itself, you know, when you're preparing your, your poster, you must take that into consideration. We give you prescription on, online that how you prepare your poster. Don't just prepare your poster because you want, just want to go to the conference. You must take your work serious and the quality must come out. And for us, what is important is the high performance computing uh, content and quality of research. If you come into this conference, even in the future, we look, we, if there is no HPC component in your work as a student, this is not a relevant component for you to come and present your work. So you want to see that, how high performance computing is assisting you to, to get solutions to your research problems. And we also look at the ability of a student essentially to communicate the science content. There are some instances where students were absent. That's why we mentioned that between that hour Half past four and half past five on Monday, all students who are presenting posters are supposed to be there, so they were not there. Some of them were not there, so, so you lost about one third of what we're giving. Very important. The last point was general impression or, or overall presentation. We give you one point on that. Don't say you don't know the criteria in future. <laughs> okay. I'm about to announce now the the winners in the master's, master's category. Before I can proceed, I'm going to call CHPC research manager, Dr. Dr. Werner Janssef and respect to assist with handing out the award. Student, when I call you, so you must jump to the heights of the distant stars. <laughs> Okay, the, the, let's take a look at this. Just wanna make sure that I don't miss them up. Mm. Just, okay. The third prize is Chiamaka Okeke from Rhodes University. Uh, the, the second prize, pra, prize is Leonard Carroll from University of Cape Town.
Is Lena here? Okay. Is there someone can come and pick the awards on his behalf? Someone from UCT? Okay. Now we're going to the, announce the, the first winner of Master's category, Beauty Shibiri from University of Limpopo. Ladies and gentlemen, I was given a very difficult task, but I can see now I'm moving very fast relative to time. So we now move into the doctoral awards. I will start again with the third. Mm, it's always a bit tricky. For doctoral uh, category, the third winner is Ahmed Hassan from University of Kwazulu Natal. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to announce the, uh, the second prize winner for doctoral category is Tobani Gambu from University of Cape Town. <laughs> Tobani Gambu, is there anyone who can come and fetch his? Certificate. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to announce the, the first winner of the PAD category. His name is Elkana Rikut from <laughs> University of Vedvatas Rand. And let's all congratulate the students who won our awards today by giving them big hands. Uh, Mr. Ceremony, I think I done my duties that was assigned to me for this evening. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, so, cybersecurity. Um, 
And that's, uh, that's a challenge that a, a, a lot of us are grappling with. I, I went next door earlier today, and I was told that these guys are trying to crack passwords. They're trying to get into each other's systems and block um, and, and create firewalls and things like that. Those are guys we pretty much have to be scared of, right? Because you're not really safe around them. So I'm going to ask Dr. Rene van Yerden to please come to the front to announce the winners of, the, of that challenge. The purpose of the cyber security challenge is to give students to the world of cyber security to um, engage in a real world situation where they can actually practice in a safe environment and play around with security issues and they can actually learn in the end how to protect, protect their future companies that they work for. Uh, my name is Robert Wiley. I'm from the University of Cape Town, and we are currently at the Sandroom Challenge. These are my teammates, Oliver and Johnny, um, and our strategy for the uh, challenge will be to focus on the easy problems first, and then move on to the harder ones once we completed those, as well as putting the problems up between each other, and then once each of us have knowledge on them, we'll discuss and hopefully get the answers. So our strategy is to go for the easy challenges first and those are marked with less marks than others. So then it might be a difficult uh, challenge and then also we try and split it up so that it's not uh, three people working on one thing at the same time. So then we'll go through them and decide, you know, I'm going to do this type of challenge or we'll do that type of challenge and go from there. As a team we believe in collaboration. Um, working as a team is a uh, part of us, so basically we will say our team. So the team is mainly uh, based on collaboration. Social engineering is the art of human imagination. So what they have to do for social engineering is I gave them a, a very quick brief on what is social engineering, which is where they're going to go out, use people as an attack vector, and see whether they can use the people to assist them in solving the challenges. Obviously we're all interested in cyber security and secondly cyber security is on the rise in South Africa with all our online banking, all our social media, so we would like to know how to protect ourselves and hopefully be able to help other people protect themselves. Um, for us it's because of the variety of questions that we get. So um, in other COVID forms or challenges it's, it's pretty specific but um, information security and cyber security is a broad enough topic so that you can get questions from where you have to decompile code, questions where you have to um, inject stuff into uh, databases, questions where you have to um, alter web pages and stuff like that. So it's pretty broad based. Got one person doing linguistics, another that's very maths based statistics, and then um, from my side it's more sort of straight down the line computer science. So it's quite it's quite diverse and people think differently so we can try to uh, approach problems from, from many different angles. Good evening. Um, it's my great pleasure tonight again to announce for the second time the Sunren Cyber Security Challenges. First I would like to, to um, thank um, happy Leon and Anwar again in supporting me with this cybersecurity challenge. This is only our second year. Um, we, we are still quite jealous of the, of this, the other groups that go, uh, have possibility of going overseas. So we are looking for sponsors. We are at the moment trying to get sponsors to get our teams also to go overseas. But you might have some exciting news in the, few, in the next few weeks. So this is just a view of, of, the, of the whole, for the, the poor teams, the 10 teams work, some of them even worked through the night, uh, did a 24 hour session, because they too, were too afraid to leave their laptops alone, because if you leave your laptop alone, the other team will mess with it. Okay. So in third place, I would ask uh, Mr. Ivan Burke, 
please. Do. Can, can you give the medals? And the winner is Downtown Cookie Factory from University of Pretoria. Second, pri second prize, I would like to ask Prof. Barry Irwin from Rhodes University to help with the prizes. So they seem to be, okay, they found it. Whitface from Stellenbosch University. For the hash challenge, sponsored by Microsoft, we must ask Mr. Peach to please help to present the slides. Ach, get the slides, the prizes. Okay. Okay. And the winner is GGEZ from the University of the Western Cape. See the local boys are excited. The next prize is the Social Engineering Prize. Um, here we decided to deviate from the normal uh, methodology. We last we wanted to give a prize to a team, we rather decided to give a prize to four individuals. So as I call up your name, please come forward. Uh, the prizes will be given by Mr. François Mouton. Mohamed Rasid Kasim from University of Witzelters Rand. Sinead Paul Lacoma, Cybernet, University of Botswana. Zonika Lomba, Northwest University. And Tishama uh, from Namibia University and Science of Technology.
for the social engineering challenge, they were expected to go up to strangers, find out their personal information, like example of the hair products that they used. And, and Zonica, I think, looks for a bold person to do, do that. So that we found a very, very good choice. Okay. Finally, uh, finally with the last two, two is the attack defend challenge. In this challenge, the groups had to secure their own server. They had two hours to secure their own servers that be prepared with a lot of issues and problems. Problems. Um, the, Mr. Skulkpeach that prepared it was really upset because he's used to, to prepare machines that are secure and it was against his grain in his soul to prepare something that was insecure. But he, he went through it and we have an insecure machine. Then for two hours they had a chance to, 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 to clear up all the problems and then after lunch all mayhem. You must secure your machine while you're allowed to attack the other machines. And this is done after two days of doing uh, normal challenges that are already tired. So w the winner of this prize is Miss Judge from the University of Pretoria. Okay. Oh, and I forget, this prize will be given by, uh, sponsored by MWR, and the medals will be given by Guy Builder Sosa. And, and now we move to first prize, and the reason they stay is the winners is Miss Judge from the University of Pretoria. <laughs> and, and the medals will be given by Mr. A.J. McCann. Thank you, Mr. I would really like to thank our sponsors, MWR. They were actually here for the, free, for the, for the week to be actually to observe the students, help, help them sometimes into the ditch, but also help them a little bit, and, and Microsoft that gave us some Azure credits. And finally, I'm really looking forward to next year that we can host this again. From last year, when it was still quite of a bit of a challenge to get it going, and we had lots of technical issues, we had fewer technical issues, and we had 10 teams of, and even two teams from neighboring countries. So I think the cybersecurity challenge this year was a great success and looking forward to hosting it next year. Thank you very much. Okay, I think uh, we, we already have got food. We had drinks. So yes, that's the end of our program. Okay. Um, now just to say, that was just uh, the, uh, the beginning, uh, we still have got a long stretch. So for this session, this will be uh, the student cluster challenge. Uh, you have seen the previous one we're looking at from uh, cyber infrastructure, um, networking, data transport, security is very important. That was uh, the awards that uh, Rainier was giving and the uh, the awards that are coming is more like uh, building clusters, uh, high performance computing, and large data processing. So uh, I would like just to say a little bit about this. Um, the, the objective here is for us to be able to build uh, the generation, um, future generation to be working in the cyber infrastructure. And what I would like to share with you is uh, in uh, November, during supercomputing, um, the center, in collaboration with other partners, uh, our long partner, Dell Computing, uh, Texas Advanced Computing, and Cambridge University, uh, we received an award from HPC Wire, which is the leader 
in high performance computing of a Reader's Choice Award for Workforce Diversity Leadership Award. And after um, a piece that was written by Dan Alls, I'm not sure if he's here. Oh, Dan, there he is. He put uh, a nice piece of uh, work that he put on the HPC wire. And a lot of people around the world liked it and hence this award. So I would say. <laughs> OK, so on that note, I'm not doing anything in here except uh, to call uh, the people who make decisions, who worked with these uh, um, kids uh, the whole week. And I would like to call Dr. Birali Runesha from University of Chicago to join me on stage as uh, the chairperson of the judges. And uh, David uh, McLeod, the organizer of this meeting and the mentor of uh, our International Student Cluster Challenge to join me on stage. And on that, uh, Birali, I hand over to you to explain the whole process today. Thank you, Happy. This uh, student cluster competition program is uh, quite a, a, an important uh, event for undergraduate students in predominantly STEM programs within universities in South Africa. Our strategy for this competition is to basically communicate with each other, um, to de-stress at appropriate times and to manage our workload. So two of our team members work very well together and two of our other teammates work very well together. So in appropriate times, we divide up the work. The strategy that we have as a team is to configure, being able to configure the hardware, the software, and the network as fast as possible so that we can be able to run all the benchmarks that we are given as a team. We as a team, we give each other different types of tasks to do. And in doing those tasks, we make sure that we communicate to each other so that we can understand the basic tasks that a person is doing. We designed a three-node cluster which has 20 cores per node and 32 gigs RAM. We believe that this would give us our optimal solution as to achieving the benchmarks as that is very reliant on interconnectivity between the nodes. We prioritized in our cluster design the core to RAM ratio and the interconnect between our nodes. So they get given a budget and uh, they choose their, their computer hardware based on um, their, their lessons learned from their initial round. Our team plan was to keep the cluster as powerful as we could within the cost limitations of the project. Uh, we've ended up with a slightly more finicky network than we wanted, but we have lots of CPU cores and lots of memory. Due to budget constraints, we had to sacrifice the Melanox switch, which was costly. It was, it was costing a lot of money. So we decided to go for a bigger RAM and two CPUs instead of one, so that we can have parallel computing across the nodes. Ideally, we would, we would have liked to have a switch in our cluster. It makes connectivity a lot easier and we would have reduced the problems we had with the ring topology. But because of our budget, we wanted to maximize the resources that we have on our, on our computers. So we ended up not buying a switch and having to deal with the problems that came with that. Our primary goal, believe it or not, is, is human capital development and the training uh, that we can provide to students. Um, and a secondary goal, obviously, is to compete and do well. So the fact that we do uh, reprioritize uh, our goals compared to our competitors, I think, is, is a, a good showing of, of how well we can compete regardless.
I guess like I was saying, I wanted to first uh, start by thanking uh, CHPC and uh, happy for uh, the invitation. I think it's been a great pleasure for me for many years I've come here to see how the cluster challenge have progressed. Every year I come, I stand on this podium, I always say, no, the challenges were very hard. And the next year when I come and I realize they've added even more challenges to it. So it's really, uh, to have been in the HPC for more than two decades, uh, I sincerely believe that really all the teams here really are all winners. And I really would like to ask first this audience to really to give them all a very big round of applause. So uh, let me first to explain the process. So, so this is a really a long journey and uh, uh, to really recognize the hard work that the mentor they go through, uh, David and Matthew's team and all the collaborators at the CHPC actually do a great work, uh, deal of work behind the scene. It's really unbelievable the amount of time and effort that they require to pull this, starting by for beginning with by the selection process inviting the, the, the students, working with them, until leading all the way towards uh, the, the cluster challenge itself. Uh, the students are provided with a budget a ceiling to which they are supposed to design a cluster. And then once they design the cluster, they have to basically uh, uh, put together all the pieces and then also are given a set of uh, benchmark that are, are, uh, have to be run during the competition. So those benchmarks are not just uh, uh, synthetic benchmark. Basically, it's really a suite of uh, real code. So there is a set of uh, what we call synthetic ben benchmark that really uh, measure a little bit some of the hardware counters, things like LIMPAC, HPCG, and HPCC. Those are really uh, some of the core uh, synthetic benchmark they have to run to. But in addition to that, they also have to run uh, real applications. And this year, the two applications that they were running, one of them is a molecular dynamics code uh, that really uh, is used for uh, some simulation, real simulations. And uh, they were given actually two sets of, uh, of data set. One is a small one they could run on a small machine. But there were also a big, large data set, a 1.5 a million uh, water molecule uh, data set that they had to even run in the cloud as well. Um, and then, beside that, they also were given a, uh, a, what we call a finite element suite of packages called Phoenix that is actually real use also in real uh, applications uh, by the, in the industry. So, in addition to the synthetic benchmark, as you can imagine, those are already um, uh, an application that are really big load, they were also provided what we call uh, a bonus uh, uh, benchmark. For Once you finish those benchmarks, you are also given to run a surprise benchmark. This year was a deep learning, uh, using basically a deep learning framework, and then uh, running the ResNet 50 uh, application. Why am I emphasizing this? Some of these application and framework, they are usually in centers like ours, where you have dedicated people that really have to do this on a daily basis as a full-time job, and you are really expecting in such a short period of time, in two days, for the student to install it, to run the application, submit results. This is really a great deal of, uh, of, of work. Also, differently this year, they also had also uh, access uh, to cloud resources that was provided by, on Microsoft Azure, where the, some of the benchmark basically they had to log in, uh, in the cloud and run some of those benchmark. So what did the panel did? Uh, we collected all those results, uh, so the students were uh, graded based on the benchmark they submitted on each one of them. All of them are normalized, but in addition to that, we also were looking at uh, uh, the design of the, the cluster itself, looking at the team dynamic, all the judges, you may have seen them walking around, uh, talking to all the students throughout. And unanimously, uh, I would have to say that we're all very impressed by the talent and the skills of all the participants. So I'm not going to take too long, but before I do that, I would like to also thank again 
uh, uh, the CHPC, the mentor team. I would like to thank all the sponsors and I'll be uh, uh, announcing them. We have Dell, Intel, Mellanox, Altair, Microsoft, and Bright Computing. Without their support, we will not be able to do this, this challenge. So what we'll do, uh, I will be uh, announcing the awards in uh, this particular order, uh, what uh, the panel of judges, and by the way, uh, I would like also to recognize all uh, my colleague judges uh, we really had a, a, a tough uh, hour to come up to the conclusion because all these uh, decisions were not really easy because all of them were winners, but we had to come up with uh, um, uh, some ranking of some sort. And I would love to say that room, we had a very heated discussion that was very, uh, very um, uh, constructive. So what we'll do, I will start with the most innovative and then go down the list, best teamwork, and then the three places, and then we're gonna call uh, all the, the, from the 10 to the 6th place on the stage as well. And then this year also new, we'll be giving uh, an award for the best uh, female uh, student award. And then after that, we're gonna also announce basically the constitution of the team. Uh, I would like to ask when I call your team here to get you your award, if you can stay a little bit on the stage so that uh, the photographer can take a nice picture of you uh, for, uh, before you can go back. All right. So the uh, first prize, which is the prize, uh, the most innovative team, uh, this is uh, the team uh, that, uh, uh, before I do that, it was uh, supported by Altair. And I would like to call Alexander Frankie from Altair, if you can join us on the stage, please. And this team actually is the one that really had the best design uh, overall, uh, that when they judge, we, we, uh, look, we look at all the designs. And uh, the prizes goes to Erof. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> it got to uh, huh? yeah. <laughs> the price called to arrow 404 name not found <laughs> Hopefully I will know how to use this uh, next time. So um, the next prize uh, is uh, sponsored by Bright Computing and is a prize uh, for the best team uh, work. Um, this actually team was very, very well organized to the point where when they studied their uh, uh, challenge, they even mapped how their sleeping time was going to happen. So the best team uh, work goes to Will code for pizza. This is the University of Wits.
So the next prize uh, is sponsored by Melanox, and I would like to call uh, Yossi Adi from Melanox to join us uh, on the podium, please. So this third prize um, goes to the team that actually was so dedicated that they didn't really work until the last minute. To the point, literally, they really submitted their last result a minute before the end of the competition. And the third place goes to Witz from the University of Witz. So the second place is a prize is sponsored by Eclipse Holdings. And uh, this team um, was one that uh, usually when doing the competition, uh, the team will ask questions. There is a lot of interaction between the team and the mentor. But this is the one that was the most independent and did not really need too much assistance uh, overall. And uh, the second place goes to the short circuits from the University of KwaZulu-Natal. So the next prize is sponsored by Dell EMC and uh, I would like to call Mark Lane from Dell to join us on the podium. So this team that won the first prize, uh, usually when uh, you have a cluster competition, usually people will be stressed. But uh, overall, this team was the one that uh, did not take everything, anything seriously. They were pretty kind of casual, and then you can tell they were also in having fun. Uh, so the first place goes to Department of Spaghetti Engineering, University of Cape Town.
Now I'm going to call uh, from the sixth to the tenth place uh, to the podium. As I call you, and I'm calling you in a random order, please come on the stage, but please stay because we're going to take a picture of everybody at the end. Just come and stay. So please join us, Star uh, University of Free State, Kulisa Academy uh, O2, and Kulisa Academy Phoenix, uh, University of Free State, Tiger Team, and Kulisa Academy, I guess. We are missing commitment issues. <laughs> Please stay. I would like to ask also the first to the fourth prize for all the team to come for another picture of everybody. Now is the time to give the award for the best female student. Uh, we would like also to congratulate all the participation of our female participants. I would like to invite Ian Wardrop and Hannes Stein to join us for, uh, on the podium. The award is sponsored by Intel. Yeah. 
this, this award actually was very uh, critical uh, in a sense that all the participants So, all the participants actually they had to write a letter explaining the why they should deserve it, and they had to submit their transcript as part of this selection process. So, and the third criteria was to look. The judges were also looking at to their partic individual participation during the cluster challenge. So, there were really a number of criteria that the judges that they had to go through that was quite exhaustive. And I would like to uh, let uh, Intel reveal the, the best female award. Okay. So the reason that we came up with this award is, um, you know, obviously I've been down to South, South Africa quite a few times and I know Hannes. And he came to me and he says, I need to sponsor CHPC again. And I went, okay, how much? And I went, okay. And so I was glad I was sitting down because it was an eye watering amount. And I thought, how do I justify this to corporate? But I'm quite lucky that, you know, I can have forecast what Hannes is going to ask for 12 months in advance, because uh, I've got to get corporate funding. But again, at Intel, we have a diversity program as well, where we have positive promotion you know, of uh, diverse candidates. And, you know, one of the prime examples of this, you've got a Scotsman and a one-armed South African up here presenting tonight. <laughs> it's probably the start for a good joke. We probably only need an Irishman and we've got a great joke. Um, so no, I mean, with Trish and the, the birds of a feather and, you know, Trish is a big proponent of kind of supporting diversity and kind of making a drive for change. And so we, we decided that, you know, I have to justify how we spend the money down here. And one of the things, you know, in, in dri driving and supporting diversity was one of the things that's key to our heart. So again, we were kind of pleased to kind of get Trish's support for this award. and. You know, Trish couldn't be here tonight because she had to fly back to the US, but she was really blown away by you know, the interaction, the support, and um, that makes that's great. And all the feedback that she's got, that makes mine and Jobs, ha Hannes's job, so much easier when we go ask for money for next year. Because if somebody says no, I go to Trish. So thank you all for kind of engaging with Trish. So over to Hannes. Who would like to see the name behind this? Okay, Ian is going to turn it around. <laughs> pay, to, pay to cash, Ian, pay to Ian Okay, first of all, um, I want all the ladies that participate in the student cluster competition to stand up so that everybody can have a look at them and give them a great round of applause. Stand up, ladies. All of you, stand up. Don't sit down, don't sit down, remain standing. I just want to give a bit of an idea to you how tough it was to adjudicate this prize. First of all, you were adjudicated based on your letter that we asked you to write, the one pager. I know it was extremely difficult to position yourself in a single pager, but there was a real purpose in that and that you will see in future life. The second part is we looked at your technical contribution in the team. The third part was the uh, 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 qualifications that you achieved, but then there was a fourth aspect as well. And that's where the, 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 the uh, adjudicators or the judges with their indication, uh, interaction with you also had to score you on a point. And it was extremely close. You can see how I walk out of that adjudication committee. <laughs> Uh, David had to pull Barali out of Fahim's beard. That's how bad it was. We had to get in the paramedics about three times and a cardiologist to resuscitate some people. But uh, I'm asking the photographer now to come up here on stage as well and look at the ladies there where they are standing. So that once, once when we reveal that name so that she can get a quick flash on that person's name. So maybe I must ask the ladies to stand a bit closer. Come a bit closer. Are you ready? Click the 
click the clicker. We're going to proceed with announcing the team that is going to go to IAC. So the way it works, usually after we have uh, uh, selected, uh, given the awards, we put together a team that will represent uh, uh, CHPC and South Africa to uh, IAC uh, competition in Germany. Uh, by default, the team that, w that wins is uh, selected. And usually the process goes, actually, it's just the beginning of their journey. So the team that is going to be put together will be constituted with six members and two uh, reserves. And those people will go, will travel to Texas at the Texas Advanced uh, Computing Center in Austin. Uh, sometime, I believe, in the summer or, or no, in January, end of January, beginning of uh, of um, February, I forgot that uh, summertime here is, the, in the, is, is, is different than uh, our, our, win, our summer. <laughs> yeah, so usually they go there for a training and then after that they come back and then they prepare for the, the competition in June in Frankfurt in Germany. So I'm gonna start by uh, announcing uh, the... Oh, yeah, uh, this... Uh, Class of competition is sponsored by Dell. I would like to uh, ask Mark Lane from Dell to join us again on the podium. So we're gonna start by announcing the reserve uh, members. And uh, maybe we should call first the team that, uh, that uh, won, uh, which would be uh, Stefan Schroeder, Dylan Held, Jayan Singh, and Clara Stessen to join us first. So those are the first four. And the first uh, person to be part of the reserve team is Stefan Pico from uh, University of KwaZulu Natal. And the second person to join as a reserve is Mapule Mazena. So now I'm going to announce the other two people that are going to be part of the four, make the six. The first person to join is Anita Demelokok from Vitz.
last but not least, the last member to join is Camilla Desai from also Vitz. And ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you the IC 2019 Student Cluster Competition Team from CHBC. Okay, so uh, first of all, I think uh, let's uh, uh, really thank the judges. This wasn't an easy task. Uh, they did a fantastic job. And, and what is important is that now, um, as uh, uh, Birali has indicated, uh, this team, the journey starts now uh, for the battle that will be taking place uh, with uh, uh, the rest of the world in June. So there's not much time in between. So immediately the students have to start. I know most of them, they don't even have IDs, so they have to get an ID, <laughs> get a passport, and get a visa, because uh, immediately in January they have to go um, to... Austin, uh, where they will spend time at the Dell Research Lab, and thanks to Dell for this partnership to take a bunch of kids and get them into their research lab and expose them to the secrets of building the computers. So Dell, um, for this. It's a, it's a fully funded trip where they pay for their tickets, for their upkeep when they're there, and uh, expose them to the technologies. And after a week, uh, spending also time with the Texas Advanced Computing, um, they come back home with a design. And normally that design, they keep it to their chest. They don't even tell us what is their design uh, that they come up with. And we only see that design in uh, ISC in Germany, in Frankfurt. And uh, for that also, Dell's partnership with this is very important. And uh, at this competition level, they don't really use the switching, the interconnect, because they are expensive. And we are very proud to have uh, Mellanox um, to support them with state-of-the-art uh, switch uh, for that. Unfortunately, I want uh, trouble Yossi to come back on stage, but we acknowledge Mellanox support also on that. And <laughs> and of course the, the hard working team of mentors, that's when David start getting gray hairs because all this logistics and the training it start now. So David and the team, um, the challenges start now. Uh, and, and, and lastly, I think this support also, it's, uh, we wouldn't be doing it if uh, the Department of Science and Technology was not entrusting us with this responsibility and say that they want to change uh, the landscape of the workforce or human capital development in the country. So they trust this and they have got expectation. Um, you heard uh, what Dr. Adams was saying. Um, South Africa always on the podium finish, and uh, he has got expectation. The minister has got expectation. The country has got expectation. So no Christmas for you. So you go and start working now. So with those words, I would like to wish you all the good luck in this long journey, and hope that uh, by July we will be meeting again and shaking hands as a successful team, go and wrestle that um, championship out of uh, the Chinese. Okay. <laughs>